Hello, this is Hans van der Kwas, Senior Lecturer at IIT Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video you will learn more about styling rasters with the different renderers that are available in QGIS. When you first load rasters into QGIS, they will get this default single band grayscale legend. And they are most often not what you need. But what you need needs to be determined by you, because you know if a raster is boolean discrete or continuous and how you want to style it to convey the message to the people who are going to use the layers. Therefore we need to use different renderers for different data types. There's another video that explains more uh, the different raster data types. In this video we'll look at the styling. Let's open the layer styling panel by clicking this button or pressing F7. And let's first have a look at this single band gray renderer that is by default assigned to your raster. Here we can choose the raster and the renderer. We use single band pseudocolor for continuous rasters, palleted unique values for boolean or discrete and multiband color for multiband uh, remote sensing images for example. Single band means that there's only one band, so we can choose here only one band. We can choose if it's from black to white or white to black. We can change the minimum and maximum value. And we can change the settings of the minimum and maximum. And by default, these values are estimated, but if you want the actual values, you can uh, change it and you get the real minimum and maximum value in the raster layer. By default, it will stretch the minimum and maximum for the whole uh, layer, but you can also change that to the current canvas or the updated canvas. With the updated canvas, it will update the stretching of the colors every time you move to a different extent. You can also use these other settings to have a cumulative count uh, or a mean plus or minus standard deviation. These settings depend on the contrast that you want to have in your image. You can also uh, have some legend settings. And you see that there in the layers panel, this will uh, adjust according to what you uh, choose here. And you can also change the minimum and maximum. If you keep it as default, it will use the minimum and maximum that's used for the styling. You can round the numbers, and you can change uh, things as the thousand separator, etc. And you can uh, choose different uh, number formats. Change the orientation. Now it's horizontal. And you can also choose that the minimum is on top. These settings are for uh, most raster renders. And the font uh, only applies to the print layout. These layer rendering settings are also common for all the renderers. We'll talk more about those. But here for the grayscale, you can also choose a colorize, and then instead of using a grayscale, it uses a scale on the color that you choose, in this case, blue. And you can always reset. We'll talk more about those other settings uh, later. If you have the live update checked on, you don't need to click apply and you can always undo and redo your settings, which is a very useful functionality if you want to test some different uh, settings of styling. This uh, digital elevation model, however, is a continuous raster and a better way to represent it is with single band pseudo color as a renderer. So uh, first you need to choose a color ramp, otherwise it doesn't show anything. And you can choose one of these uh, presets here. If you go to all color ramps, you see a few more. Let's choose uh, red to blue. It's not very intuitive if we have the blue at the mountain top, so you can also invert the color range. And 
you can add here the label unit suffix to uh, meters and then here in the label that will be printed that's also taken over in the print layout by default it will use a linear interpolation you can also go to discrete where the values are classified and that's also what you see there in the layers panel you can change those values and it uses the less than or equal and you see it also adjusts the label you can change the mode from continuous to equal interval to adjust the amount of classes that you want to see they will have an equal interval but you can also choose quantiles There's also the option exact. With exact, it will use an equal sign for the values that you have in the value column. Let's switch back to linear and choose a more intuitive color ramp. You can create a new color ramp or edit the existing one. Here you can change the stops. You can add or remove stops or you can change the color of the stops. Let's make it a bit purple and we can remove that stop a little bit. The different ways to uh, set the colors. And here we see the result uh, applied immediately. But it's much easier to use preset colors. So go back to create new color ramp. And there I choose CPT City, which is a catalog. This catalog has all kinds of uh, thematic presets, such as uh, bathymetry or uh, different blue colors. Or for topography, we can choose uh, different ones that are here. Simply select one and then it will be uh, applied. So, for example, we can choose for topography the elevation one if you want to uh, reuse it more easily you can save it as a standard legend also here we can play with the contrast so it updates the colors to the min and max in the view extent that we have here in the map canvas You can also set the value manually, then it will switch to user defined. But let's keep it at the minimum maximum of the full extent. Now there's also a hill shade renderer and uh, an easy way to apply that to the DEM is to make a duplicate of this layer. And uh, to not get confused, we rename it to hill shade. Duplicate only affects the, the styling. It refers to the same data. We switch the layer to Hillshade and the renderer to Hillshade. You see that the layer name doesn't start with a capital and the renderer starts with a capital. And we can change here the resampling to bilinear to avoid these blocky artifacts. We can change the uh, azimuth of the sun. And you see that when we don't have the sun in the northwest that we see the relief inverted. So uh, normally we use their uh, 315 degrees. You can also play with the altitude of the sun. Get it lighter for 30 degrees or a bit darker at 60 degrees. I use the default here. And with the Z factor you can uh, exaggerate the relief. So now I've exaggerated it three times which gives a bit more dramatic effect. You can also use a multi-directional light source. Now a nice thing is to uh, use blending with the DEM. So I switch back to the DEM and I go here under layer rendering to blending mode and I switch it to multiply. And now we see the colors of the DEM blended with our hillshade. 
and that uh, gives a very nice result here where we can see all those river valleys and those uh, mines very clearly. There are different blending modes that you can uh, apply. Besides Hillshade, there is also a contour renderer which is very useful for elevation data. So I'm going to create another duplicate and I'll rename it to contour. And this one needs to be on top because I want to see later the DM in the background. Make sure that the contours layer is uh, selected and use the contours renderer. And it uses some default values here that I'm going to play with. So the contour interval is the equidistance between the contour lines, so the elevation difference, now it's set to 50. And an index contour is one that can have different stylings, for example, every 250 meter, uh, we can use a thicker line or another color. So let's uh, play a little bit with this. I put the contour interval on 10 and the uh, index contour interval at 100. And because they now have the same style, we don't see uh, much difference. But I can click on the symbol. And I can uh, change the color or the opacity. So just play it now a little bit with the opacity. And here we see that the, the contours are now a bit uh, lighter at the 10 meter interval. And the uh, 100 meter interval is the thick line. And now it becomes more readable. And then if I also change here the stretching of the colors to the current canvas, we can uh, have this very nice uh, elevation uh, map. And here back under contours, you can also uh, change this input downscaling to more or less generalize the contour lines. Because they're derived from a raster and they can be quite uh, blocky. So you can also play with that. And this is just for uh, visualization. If you really want to have uh, contour lines in vector format, you go to the raster menu and then under extraction, you can find contour. There's a very nice video from Klaus Carlsen on how to style uh, vector contours using geometry generators. So far we have covered continuous rasters and rendered them in uh, different ways, by single band pseudocolor, by hill shade or by contours. Let's now have a look at discrete rasters. There's this one with uh, basins, and it is styled with the default single band gray. If I query uh, the data, then I see that uh, these pixels have integer numbers, and I can see they have sharp, sharp borders. So this is a discrete raster, so I use palleted unique values. You can choose here uh, ramps, but uh, because these numbers are not in a certain order, I use here random colors. And this will assign to each value that it finds in the raster a unique color. You can now change each color manually, or you can shuffle the random colors to get a different choice of uh, colors assigned to the integer numbers of the pixels. Similar other uh, features exist here as in the other renderers that were already explained. Boolean rasters with only true false, only 0 and 1, are also styled with palleted unique values, but also Strahler orders, which are in the ordinal format, which means that the numbers are in a fixed order that cannot be changed. So there we need to use also the palleted unique values, but we cannot use random colors. In this case we use a ramp. And we use here blues because the lower values are smaller rivers and the higher values are bigger rivers, so we make them more blue if they are higher. And this shows us the nice uh, pattern here of the drainage in this basin. We can also uh, use blending mode here. But what you can also do is uh, remove certain uh, values that you don't want, then they become uh, transparent. So here we only see value 8, 9, 10 of Strahler. And you can mix that with the other uh, layers because uh, the other values are transparent. 
you can add uh, specific values that you want to make uh, transparent. So if I want value 8 to be transparent, I type 8 there, and then 8 will uh, not be visualized, it will be uh, transparent. And I can also change the global opacity there. But blending gives uh, normally a nicer result. There's an option to calculate the raster histogram. So here you see that uh, how the amount of Strala orders uh, changes. And there is the history. We can also change the labels. So in this case, we would change it to 1, 2, and 3 for the Strala orders because 8, 9, and 10 uh, doesn't make much sense. Here we have them all again, and you see there in the colors that uh, the Strala order 8 is uh, transparent because we said that 8 needs to be <laughs> transparent. So we see the colors of the dam uh, below. Now the different renderers that you use also affect the way the legends are generated in the print layout. So let's create a new print layout and add a legend to just see how that looks like. And here we see how the different renderers affect the legends that are created. So Strahler is ordinal, with a strange numbering because we changed it. Uh, the DEM is uh, continuous, we see the contours there, and Hillshade doesn't have a legend here. And the basins are uh, discrete colors. And then uh, we can further adjust that there in the legend settings. So if you are more interested in the print layout, check also the other videos on how to create beautiful maps in the print layout using QGIS.